Cruz Hernandez worked for the Department of Education. She developed a holistic art therapy program that she used as a teacher, counselor, and psychologist while working in New York City public schools. Luz, what is holistic art therapy? Holistic art therapy is a multidisciplinary approach that incorporates the arts in order to help students develop skills that can address academic, behavioral, social, physical, and emotional needs. Here we have Ms. Antonia Rodriguez, former principal and director of the Bilingual Bicultural School of Arts at PS7, and also Ms. Janice Gonzalez, who was a highly dedicated and respected teacher. Ms. Rodriguez, can you describe the environment of the um, school where this program actually was implemented? The Bilingual Bicultural Arts School was an elementary school located in Manhattan's East Harlem District. It, it served a population of 265 Hispanic students from diverse um, ethnic groups such as Mexico, Puerto Rico, um, Central America, and Dominican Republic. These children came with a lot of emotional and um, e educational challenges. When Project Yes started at the school, the students were transformed completely. They learned through a multidisciplinary curriculum that um, incorporated holistic disciplines like yoga, journalism, ma uh, drama, and dance, music. Project Yes was a, a, a wonderful way sort of like an extension of the academics during the day for the children in order to uh, provide uh, music, art, poetry, yoga, stuff that they didn't have at home, stuff that we couldn't do during the day as teachers because the curriculum was so packed. Um, I saw a growth and I saw uh, the desire, it's sort of like they wanted to get through the day and they got through the day wonderfully, smoothly. They did really well. They came prepared, they did their homework. They knew that Project Yes was an extension to the academic day and that in order to uh, participate that they also had to do well in the classroom. And it really uh, provided um, multiple skills. You know, I remember when I first started teaching at PS7 when you hired me, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember someone telling me, why are you teaching in Harlem when you can go anywhere else? I said, because that's where they need me and that's the culture that I know. And BBAS was truly a gift to the community, to the teachers. I mean, Ms. Rodriguez, I remember when you used to do the parandas, I was so thrilled and the kids, it, the, we did the parandas, we did plena, we did art, we did everything, the parents were involved, the parents did not feel excluded. Mm -hmm. They were a part of it. And uh, it was just something that is, I don't, I don't think it's ever gonna happen again. But as, a, as a child, which is why I became a teacher, you know, reading books, Dick and Jane, White Picket Fence, the whole thing, East Harlem was in that. Where I grew up, that, that's not, that wasn't my environment. Mm -hmm. You know, and what we gave the children and what we provided you know, was really understanding where they came from, where they were, and where they could go. Mm -hmm. You know, shoot for the stars, no limit, born to win, born for greatness. I told them every day. A happy child is a, a, learning, a child. learning child, my motto. Here we have Carmen Reyes, who's a former student at PS7 and who participated in the Holistic Art Therapy Program. Carmen is presently a parent coordinator for the Department of Education. Yes, uh, so I've been working for the Department of Education for about three years as a parent coordinator, and uh, I joined the program with Ms. Hernandez in the second grade, and I was part of it for about three, three four years. And also the dances, you know, we, there's one thing to dance at home and with the family and in parties, but also to use dancing as part of culture, to get introduced to other cultures 
that I, was, I would not have been exposed to otherwise. And one of the things that I really got is that it's just something that became almost natural to me and also became a part of who I am as a human being. And it's something that over the years I also use with the parents that I worked with over the years. And as a parent coordinator, I use a lot of the things that I learned exposing, because I think exposing people to different art forms is important. You expose them and introduce them to a whole new world. So I use some of that art, some of that work, and I use it with my parents in some of the Head Start programs I was a part of, introducing the parents to dancing, to art, to uh, visual journaling, and I incorporated all of that because families, one of the things as a parent coordinator, families, they're dealing with a lot, the individuals, the parents, the mothers, and using these art forms just gave them an opportunity to connect to themselves and also create a new relationship with their children. Because if they know themselves, they can understand their children. The, what was the overall impact that this program had on you? The overall impact, wow. Um, it's, it's, I really have to just take a step back at that because when I was participating in the program, I just thought it was fun. It was beautiful. It was exciting. I got to stay, you know, later after school and do these fun things. But as I got older and I really started to see that I can use these, these tools or these forms to express myself and that I had a voice. And especially during my teenage years when it was difficult for me to express myself, there were a lot of challenges of me dealing with my emotions, expressing my emotions. And there were periods where I dealt with some very difficult things. And for some reason, it just, it was almost like it was embedded inside of me. And I didn't know that. You know, I couldn't verbalize it. I couldn't say what it was. But that introduction to, to the arts just, just w was with me at all times. And even as I started middle school and high school writing, I continued to dance. I went to a, um, a middle school that was called a performing arts school. So there was something that I just wanted to keep going towards that art. Like, I didn't even understand what it was. But I'm like, I want to dance. I want to draw. I want to write. I want to do all of that. And when I went to high school, I went to graphic arts high school. And I saw that. I'm like, I didn't even know what the heck they did there. I just like, it had the arts name in it. So I wanted to go there. Um, so it, it stood with me. But as a grown up, now I have three children. So what I see the overall impact is that I want that for my children. I want them to know that you're not just, you can it's not just your, the intelligence and books, like this is all these parts of you that you, for them to, and I want them to nurture that. So I think that the overall impact is one, feeling connected to myself and also having like this, this urge to get connected and stay connected because sometimes, <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen and I'm all over the place. But it, the overall impact is just that it allowed me to just see that there is a need to, to be grounded. And despite of things that happened throughout my life, it was just, it's, this need keeps coming back to stay grounded and stay and continue to want to stay grounded. So that's uh, what I see the overall impact has been. Mr. Diogenes, can you please explain to us what method you use for the mural painting while working with the students? Hmm, that's a very interesting question. Um, first of all, uh, I'm very happy to be here talking about your program, a, a program that I think I have a lot of memories. Basically, the, the method that I used was related to the, uh, the art uh, as a healing, art as a holistic, uh, uh, have a, a holistic uh, uh, approach, um, because I think uh, that kind of approach we work with, the we as a human beings, you know. Uh, one thing that I used first, since it was an after school program, and children are very, uh, uh, or the student very, impatient, uh, I thought that besides having food, the important part was to do a stretching. The same, so we do some Qigong exercises to stretch the body in a very light way. And after that, uh, we do some visualization. And uh, I used to ask them uh, to look at the uh, eye of the mind. So, and they close their eyes and then start looking at the eye, eye of the mind and see what generates uh, from there. Before we get into more deep uh, visualization, we talk like uh, we have a real body, um, uh, a real mind, and a real uh, energy. So it was easy to talk about the body because they can't touch the body. It was easy to talk about the mind because they can't touch his, oh, this is my mind here. But it was hard to talk about 
the energy, the spirit. So we used to do the first Qigong was to rub in the hands and get it very warm and ask them, no, make it, rub the harder you can. And when it gets very warm, warm, they separate the, uh, the hands and they feel, they felt the energy. So with this, uh, with this energy, they start creating the visualization because they thought that they have a, a, a something there that a kind of biochemic en a energy that it can be projected to any place they want. So we use the mind for that. So looking through the eyes uh, of the mind was a perfect thing because they look at that light, the energy as light. So uh, at a time I used to ask them to do some scribbles. While they're looking at the, the mind, they do some scribble on a piece of paper. And then after the scribbles, and it was kind of automatic uh, 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 exercise, the idea was to catch one thought among many thoughts that have passed in, in one second. They say about 30 thoughts pass to the mind every, every second. So from there, I asked them to turn the paper, uh, turn over the paper, and start writing. So writing a a of, uh, without, without thinking or stop themselves to think about grammar. I just want the flow, the flow of the writing. So once we do this, we go into another part of us to share with the group. So in that group, we talk to each other. They, some of them uh, say, oh, I was thinking about this and that, that. And then when they, they, they s the kids or the student listen to the other student stories, oh, but I forget also to add this to that. So that was fantastic because then they, re they write a composition mm -hmm. of, of, that, of the story because now that story belongs to them, it's not belong to us. And from that story, we start building up, building up the whole concept. The idea was to expand the mind, to have a self-confidence, you know, that they can deal with an idea, they can deal with a thought and create something from there. And from some, something that they can be part of their li everyday life, something that can, they can live with that for, for life. So that basically this visualization and this uh, idea of, of writing the stories was a good thing, I guess, not just for the arts, but also uh, for mathematics, for the, the literature, or whatever class they're taking. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, once we start describing with uh, uh, the story in drawing, not with the time with images, no with words. So that was interesting because they said, oh, we started, uh, for example, I show a square. So, oh, but how you can talk about perspective from this? Oh, we yeah, are, because you add another square, a smaller one, and then you have sizes, you know, the size. But, uh, then we say, how you put it together? So, well, we're going to use a horizon line. When you use a horizon line, they see that the objects are there in a space. So they will use us in the class constantly. Mm -hmm. So, oh, but what happened with those uh, squares? They are flat. He said, we need to give a volume to this. So that's what they learn from say, to create volume. Like a 3D, they always like the 3D mm -hmm. images, you know, to do that. And I said, oh, but you have just a box there. But what about these boxes? Uh, Maybe if we have texture, so we, we look at the buildings, oh yeah, the, the, the texture of the buildings in a barrio is it this way, so they, they, they uh, uh, imitate that texture on those uh, blocks. And so in, in that way, they start uh, developing these stories in their own work, so they start learning about drawing, about using the colors, and things like that. So they have image and text image and text because they have the story and they have the image. The idea was to make books, but that but I did it in another class, another place, but they, I couldn't do that here because the facility, but they, we did the mural. We used all the sketches and then we have uh, large canvases and we start playing the story of every student in different parts of the canvases. So they start dealing with that story, their stories. Nice. And then for the first mural was about the, the, the community we as a community and what they see every day coming to the school. You know, that a way that every time they leave the house with a problem with the family, 
when they walk on the bar in the, in the barrier street, when they go to the stores, when they go to the school. They look at all those problems, you know, those situations, how they perceive them. Not how we perceive them, you know, how a children, a, a student can perceive this situation. And they are able to bring it together in uh, exhibition. Um, that we did actually in, in the Taller Boricua, in 106th Street, uh, in the basement at that time. Thank you so much for your time and dedication oh, to the program yeah. and for all the lives you touch, yeah. not only here in East Harlem, but throughout the world, because you are a very respected international artist. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and here I have Ms. Yolanda Ramirez, who work with students with special needs. My students with special needs was a self-contained 12 to 1 classroom. And I had the privilege of having a wonderful administration meet their needs and address their needs by placing Luz and myself and that self-contained class with the yoga program. Now the yoga program consisted of once a week a session about 45 minutes and the students had many needs. Um, basically there were children who had speech and language impairments, physical um, gross and fine motor coordination issues, so they received physical therapy, they received occupational therapy, they had learning disabilities, um, but most of all there were a lot of other issues involved that yoga was hopefully going to address. And I noticed that the children who had focusing issues and um, had issues with coordination and stamina really um, resonate with this program. This program addressed those issues in, in many facets. In the beginning, of course, the children had some issues with coordination with the poses, but little by little and step by step, they were able to feel confidence in their bodies because this was a program that was addressing um, a kinesthetic mode of learning. And because it was a judgment-free zone area, no one felt that they had to outdo each other. So the, the children really resonated with Luz as the coordinator and the presenter, the yoga teacher, and I also was able to assist with the children's poses. I too was also um, learning how to um, move my body and learning poses because I was taking yoga classes in the evening. And one of the things, the major things that, that came out of this yoga program was that I noticed that the children brought in many of the tools and strategies into the classroom. Many of the children who had problems focusing on a task, their, co their friends would tell them, remember, remember how to breathe? Remember how Ms. Hernandez and Ms. Ramirez told you that you need to stop and just calm your breathing? And, and the children would actually do that. They would listen to their friends and remember, and they were able to function better and at attend to the task and complete the task. It also helped them with um, socialization in the sense that um, with impulsivity because children, all children and children with special needs have an impulse to do things very quickly and, and, and skip steps. But as we know, yoga and the poses, there is a process and there are steps to completing poses. And that I saw was transferred from the yoga program, their sessions into the classroom coordination, stamina, were things that were very visible to me that I was able to see in the children that they were developing. Ch and children really gravitated to the program. They were looking forward to it. They knew that they were going to have fun. They knew that they were able to move their bodies in the way that they could and it was going to be fine that whatever pose that they were able to present to the yoga teacher, to Luz, that it was going to be accepted and they were going to have a lot of positive reinforcement always. So many of the sessions, as the sessions continue to, um, to grow, I saw the children growing and I saw that the children's attention span, they were able to sit a little bit longer in the classroom. They were able to, um, if they needed to sit in the yoga position while doing their schoolwork, that they were allowed to do that and they really enjoyed it. In a whole, in conclusion, I think that the children brought the strategies and the tools 
from these yoga sessions to the classroom. And I'm hoping, and I did see that even in, the, in recess, in the lunchroom, and even dealing with other children, especially with, in conflict resolution when they had to deal with um, maybe someone irritating them, that they were able to breathe, they were able to think, they were able to um, use their bodies in a very positive way. So in conclusion, I think that the yoga program is something that the special needs population definitely um, profited, benefited, and were able to take away those tools and strategies and know that they have pride and that they accomplished something that the rest of the world globally does and that they were a part of that. And um, I'm very thankful that I was part of that too and that I continue to resonate. When I see children learning and trying to be yogis or trying to be part of a yoga program, that I know that they're going to benefit in the most positive way possible. Ms. Ramirez, I want to thank you from my heart for your time and dedication to the program and for making it the success it was at the school. Oh no, thank you, thank you, namaste. Namaste. Here I have Mr. Roy Cordoba, a high school teacher and also a photographer. Mr. Cordoba assisted in the activities and the productions of the Yoga Dance Club at the High School of Fashion Industries. He participated with students on field trips to museums, art galleries, cultural centers, and ethnic restaurants. As a photographer, he documented the Yoga Dance Club. Can you please talk to us about your experience with the students doing these activities? Students during these activities were very enthusiastic about the program, about being together, about participating with, uh, with other students, new students in, uh, that came into the club. Um, and they wanted to know who I was. And in telling them who I was, um, I felt like I became a member of the club, and an honorary member, if you will. And um, it was very easy to, to take photographs of students while they were doing either dancing or eating or, or the yoga poses, if you will. Why do you think these programs are important for high school students? I think these type of physical programs would be best for, are best for high school students because it, it, it goes into their self-esteem, it works into their motivation, and it goes into, I believe, their limitations of, as to what they can and cannot do. You know, um, if they try something new and they find that they cannot do it, chances are that they'll probably challenge themselves and go one step further. Thank you very much for your participation in the program. The yoga dance program at the High School of Fashion Industries was a program that had to be presented in a more practical and sophisticated manner. The purpose was to have students engage in the practice so that they could experience the entire being, body, mind, and spirit. They learned poses and their benefits, breathing practices and relaxation techniques, they also learn basic concepts of meditation. These practices help students experience the connection between body and mind, understanding that in order to heal the body, we needed to recognize the importance of this unity, mind, body, and the psyche. The goal was to help students integrate the practices in their daily life and to set goals that were measurable. I have here two former students, Ms. Diana Hernandez, who's the first president of the Yoga Dance Club, and Ms. Jemelis Nunez, who was a special guest at the Yoga Club also. And I would like for them to describe their experience in the program. Ms. Diana, since you were the first president of the Yoga Club, can you share with us what was your experience? Well, I want to say it was like amazing. Um, it was different than what you normally experience in high school. Um, it's not gym, it was yoga, it was a way of form of relieving stress, which was good, especially in high school, because we had to deal with a lot of academic stuff. Um, and yoga was one positive way to relieve stress and 
not because it was relieving stress, but I learned about myself, my inner mind, and it helped me actually grow, especially now, um, to be a very calm, positive well-being and learning about yoga and the five elements had helped me throughout every life situation every struggle I have gone through throughout my entire life so it was very beneficial for me from high school and it still is now and Miss Nunez um, well let's see how did yoga impact me um, well basically what Diana said but um, it taught me that there was a connection between your body and your mind that through relaxing your body you can also achieve mental stillness which I think is probably the most important lesson that I've learned through yoga. Um, being a Hispanic girl growing up in the Bronx you don't really get exposed to yoga like that but I was grateful to have gone to the high school fashion industries where Miss Hernandez tried to open that door for us to expose us to something new um, because otherwise I probably wouldn't have tried it until much later in my life and when I needed it the most was during those difficult high school years where you're under a lot of stress and peer pressure and maybe you're not feeling so good about yourself but you know you go to yoga you let all of that go. Um, can you share about your experience at uh, a yoga center? If you had any, because I remember we used to take field trips so that the students would have an idea what a yoga center would be like and what took place. I spent hours every single day there just taking class after class after class. I remember one day I got there at 11 and I left at like 7 o'clock. This one instructor was like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I love the yoga center. It's like my go-to happy place. If ever I feel stressed or sad or anything like that, I go straight over there. Even just the smell, just being there, remembering that it was Miss Hernandez who brought me there. It just brings me so much peace. And it's like my happiest place, I think, in all of New York City. 